very good evening to one and all. And on behalf of the organizing committee of the sixth lecture workshop on transdisciplinary areas of research and teaching by Shantu Sarupatagar awardees, I would like to welcome Professor Rohit Shirvastav, who is a Himanshu Patel Chair Professor and Head Department of BSBE, IIT Bombay. And he'll be talking to us on an interesting topic, which is, I'll say, very much relevant, especially as we all are fighting this COVID-19 for last two years. So the topic is affordable healthcare technologies in sensing drug delivery and therapy. So before inviting him to deliver his talk, I would like to introduce him to all the participants and the delegates who are there in this online mode. He's a well-recognized for his translational research in the field of biosensor and affordable point-of-care diagnostic technologies for rural and maternal healthcare. The Abdul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellowship, the Fellowship of the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, FRSP, FRSC, Sri Om Prakash Basin Award for Excellence in Health and Medical Sciences, the DBT Tata Innovation Fellowship Award, the DBT Process and Product Commercialization Award, Nasi Reliance Industrial Platinum Jubilee Award are examples of Professor Srivastava's accomplishment in the last 10 years. In his career at IIT Bombay, he has graduated more than 35 PhD students and more than 75 MTech students and supervised around 100 research interns. He has published more than 200 research papers in international journals and has been granted 24 Indian and US patents. In addition, he has also filed more than 100 patents, trademarks, and IDFs. He has also mentored more than 25 MedTech startups in the last five years and helped them to secure grants and develop innovative solutions for the healthcare. Uh, with these words, I request Professor Shilvastav to kindly share his screen. To Thank you story. very much, uh, sure. Professor Saxena. Thank you for the invitation. Let me share my screen and get started. So I hope you can see my screen. Yes, perfect. Okay. So let me welcome all of you. Uh, I'm very happy to deliver this lecture and I usually you know always agree to deliver a lecture which can tell the story of how we went from publishing papers from you know doing basic research all the way to translational research which has now um, created a very big impact in the Indian market. So once again let me welcome all of you my talk my title is a little larger than this one but this is just the logo where we say, that you know, we are working on affordable healthcare technologies in our nanobios lab at IIT Bombay. So when I start my presentation, and typically I always go through this slide to tell you how the innovation ecosystem at IIT Bombay has helped me and many of my faculty colleagues. Now, when you look at this slide, what you see glaring, glaringly in front of you is that uh, typically any engineering or you know any institute in uh, this country, a university will have you know a mix of departments. So there are engineering departments, there are science departments. Uh, I myself being in a you know science and engineering department, so we are both biosciences and bioengineering, have a little bit of an advantage because you know we have both sides of the coin. But many people sitting in engineering or sitting in pure sciences have to collaborate with others in order to make sure that whatever idea they have has uh, you know, gets inputs from these different disciplines and is able to move forward. Now, when I say move forward, it is the help, it is with the help of other uh, entities on the campus. In IIT Bombay, we have got several such entities. We've got the Tata Center for Technology Design. We've got the, uh, the WRCB, which is Vadwani Research Center for Bioengineering. We've got Professor Ravi's Betik, you know, which is a biomedical engineering translational center. Uh, we've got uh, several other you know, entities, including the Desai City Center for Entrepreneurship, the Sign Business Incubator, and then we have also a research park coming up. Now, what these entities do is bring us in contact with industry. And I emphasize this point very heavily because, you know, me as a academic investigator or an academic uh, person will not be able to take any product to market unless I have an industry person with me right from the beginning. And that is facilitated by such entities. If you know you don't have a 
such centers, you will probably have an incubator and that incubator will definitely be able to help you. If you don't have an incubator, your institute will be able to you know, tie up with an incubator, which again, who will be happy to help you. Bayrak has many such uh, bio nest incubators across the country, which are helping you know, smaller institutes, you know, or even cluster of institutes to take their ideas from, um, I'll say idea to uh, prototype all the way to market. Now I can always apply for private funding, but, you know, uh, or public funding for that matter, because DBT, you know, ICMR, DST, all of this are very easily accessible agencies, you know, BIRAC, they are, you know, they are always ready to give funds provided you have a good idea. But if I would like to, you know, take the help of a private agency to get money, there are many milestone checks in place. And this is something that one has to understand in the beginning that taking money from a private agency means that you are committing to their milestones to making sure that your idea goes all the way from your bench to bedside. And in the process, you're now going to create jobs. Of course, you're going to either start up your own company or transfer the technology to a medtech industry. But then you're going to lead to job creation, making these indigenous products, adding high value jobs you know, in the market, affordable healthcare products, and do a capacity building. With that background in mind, you will now see how we have been able to trans to you know traverse this gap from lab to bench side, and that's something that will become clear. But before I even get there, uh, this is one slide I spent just a, a few seconds on, just telling you that look at the slide, you know, look at the right hand corner of the slide, which talks about all these different countries and how much they are spending, you know, as health expenditure per person. Look at India. We are spending, and of course, these numbers are in dollars because they have been taken from you know a website which quotes in dollars. But if you look at that number, $75 per person, of that 70% is private spending and only 30% is public spending, which means that all of the stuff that you do will actually be able to be used by a common man only if they are affordable. And that's exactly what comes out in this slide here, affordability and uh, you know making these point of care devices, making simple reagents. And this was you know, very, very evident during COVID times because you know, I, I remember last year when I went for a COVID test during uh, April or May, I spent 6,000 rupees on the RT-PCR. Today, if you go for an RT-PCR test, it is less than 450 rupees. So imagine a 10 time drop in a test cost is possible because India has been able to indigenously make these reagents in the country. And that's useful because, you know, unless you bring it down to a level which is useful to the entire country, it's not going to make an impact. So now I'll tell you what we have been able to do. So some of our major research areas have been, you know, and I joined IIT Bombay in 2005. So I started working on several things that I had learned during my, uh, you know, PhD work in the US. And I and kept doing that. You know, I was working on photothermal therapy or drug delivery or magnetic chemohypothermia or, you know, or even nano and micro multifunctional systems. Now, these are very good materials to publish papers. They are very, very good to create an impact or even to file patents, but very difficult to translate because, you know, if you look at these materials, they are all going inside the body. And when you want to go inside the body, there is this large, you know, funding gap that you need to cross. And that funding gap usually kills the project. In this country, it is very difficult to get that funding, that kind of funding, right in the beginning. So we changed track a little bit. You know, somewhere in 2009 or 10, I was sitting down with one of a student, MTech student who had joined my lab, and I said, "Look, I want to do something different, and I want to create an impact in this country. Let's do something different." And he said, "Sir, let's start a company, and let's make sure that one of the ideas that we work on, there were several ideas that we had in mind." will go all the way from lab to market. With that, we started working on affordable diagnostic products. We went into microfluidics. We went into many other things. But over the years, we have you know, diversified into several other areas. If you look at this slide now, with COVID hitting this country, you know, and, and it's been two years now you know, in March, it has been a terrible impact on the country. But more importantly, it has uh, enthused all of us to work for the country. 
and it has made sure that every researcher in the country has something to do, something to offer to the country for against COVID research. You know, if I can frame it that way, or against COVID or research against COVID, I will say. So there are many things we are doing. We are working on protective equipment, COVID care research. We are working on disinfectants and sterilization products. None of these are path breaking research, but they are useful to the country because if you can make them at affordable prices, if you can make them better than what others do, then we won't have to depend on China to get these material in this country. We are self-sufficient ourselves. And there are many other things we are doing. We have gone into uh, forensic diagnostics. We have gone into smart dressing materials. I'll talk about some of these as I go along. But the journey started you know, way back in 2010 with Biosense, that company you see at the bottom left of your screen. And Biosense was the student's company with which we were able to take these products, some of these products to the market. So the ones that you see in this circle, many of the products have hit the market. Many of them are in the process of hitting the market. But we were you know, fortunate to have many student companies over the last several years now. And with these student companies, if we have again made many, many more products that are going to uh, probably reach market in the next 18 to 24 months. Dynasense being another, Mosen Technologies, Care NX, Neodocs, Nordetect, and many other companies. You know, I know, I, you know, it has become so many more that I cannot even fit it on this slide and many more that I forget. But the impact is there for you to see that we have been recognized by every funding agency for every major award in this country. I don't consider any award to be personal. I think it is all the hard work of every student that has passed through the lab, every company that has collaborated with the lab that deserves this award. And the award is for the country that, you know, people like us who can, uh, you know, who have a small 800, 900 square feet lab can have afford to have 50 people in the lab. I had 55, 60 people working in the lab at some point of time. Many of them PhD students, many of them postdocs, many of them interns, staff, and you know we had several funded projects, but the biggest impact was that we were happy to see our ideas uh, get translated into actual products that you see on this screen here. And the products made a big difference in somebody's lives, and that was what kept us going. So I show you some products now, and I'll show share some stories as we go along because I wanted to keep it a little you know broader perspective uh, as to why uh, uh, this year the Bhatnagar committee felt that translational research also needs to be recognized. And there are many, many things that, you know, people have started doing. And I am hopeful that many other people who are working in this country for the country, for India, as CSIR is doing, you know, I hope that many other people join this journey and are able to win the Bhatnagar award, you know, in subsequent years. So we started the journey with UCheck. You see that right in the center. And this is a mobile-based urine analysis system, a very simple idea, but I'll tell you how it, it came up across. And this was the first product that hit the market. It was a student master's project. Went on to become a full-fledged product in the market and created a huge impact. And simultaneously, we started working on our own glucometer. And this was because ICMR called us and asked us to work on this problem. There were many other people called, but finally only a few of us made it to the top. And then it, Biosense around that time also commercialized their product, which was TouchB, and this also created a huge impact in this country, which is non-invasive hemoglobin monitoring. I am proud to you know, put all these devices in my portfolio because I feel that each one of this had inputs from the lab, had several discussions, had several meetings that you know led to finally these products reaching the market. We are working on many, many more. SmartSense is a, a welcome trust funded uh, work from UK, uh, which wanted an affordable healthcare product in India through one of their schemes. I don't know if that scheme still exists, but when it was, you know, it was a beautiful scheme that funded affordable healthcare products for India. And there was this panel that was sitting in UK. We had to actually go to London to present this idea and they were, they grilled us to make sure that you know that there was affordability to this that there was something of value that india could get out of funding that you know welcome trust was putting in uh, we also worked on an electrofinder product you know which was for um, uh, for you know imprint scheme of india that was also a beautiful scheme and uritsa which is you know a urine analyzer again uh, the first one was a smartphone based this is a 
hardware or electronics based. But how did the first one come about? And this is something that I always share with you know, all of you. I always share with many people I go. I say, don't work on a product and then try to find the market for it. Always go out. First, find out the market for it. First, actually search if there is a market for the idea that you have. You just have an idea. Now, that idea could be, look, can I do this sensing? Can I, do, can I make this product and put it in the Indian market? Then somebody will tell you, but something like that already exists. Why do you want to do that? Then you will come back and start asking questions on that. And this is what helped us. I sent many of my students, they surveyed labs. They actually figured out that there is a market for urine analyzers. Urine analyzers, you know, one never stops to think. You know, many of us give urine samples and to path labs and wait for a day and then the results come back. And we don't even know whether that result is ours or not. And many small places, small towns in this country still don't use a full urine dipstick for one person. They actually cut it along the you know, axis and they will actually use it for two people. Can you imagine? Because there are 10 parameters there, 10 of these pads, you cut them in half and they assume that, you know, that it will still work. Many times it doesn't because the chemistry is not uniform. And so uh, the results are not uniform. Siemens made a killing in this market. There are many other small companies that are making a killing Chinese products, but there was this niche area where we said, can we go to tier two, tier three cities and establish our product there? And can we make it cheap? You know, at least one third to one fifth, the cost of whatever exists in the Indian market and make sure that it is picked up by the market and not you know, discarded as a cheap Chinese product. And I keep saying Chinese because I, I hate these Chinese products all over the country, but you know, till we are self-sufficient, one cannot do anything. We have to still depend on many of these uh, to, to you know, fulfill that shortfall. So this came out of our discussions, you know, and the discussion was, can we use a simple mobile phone for diagnostics? Remember this was 2010, there was not a single mobile phone being used for anything other than calling, not even video calling, you know, go back to 2010, not even video calling. You know, and today, you know, it has become like everything. But in those years, you know, it was difficult to think of a mobile phone for diagnostics. And this was the first example in this country where we said that we can use this, make our own strips. The 10 parameter urine dipsticks are the ones that you see on the right hand corner of your screen and use an algorithm that will fit the values to, uh, you know, input values which have already been put in that algorithm. It's a simple process. All you do is take images as the pads are changing color. And this can be done at separate time intervals. You know, something changes at 15 seconds, something will take 45 seconds, something will take 75 seconds. And your algorithm can manage all that. And finally, your results will come out on the screen and it will actually be in the app. So very easy to upload it to a server. You know, all the mobile phone can be easily connected. And finally, you get all your results which can be useful, you know, to not just you, but to maybe somebody who's trying to analyze these results. So the, the strips were priced at 30 rupees per strip. And this is at least one third cheaper than Siemens strips. And the ACR, which is the 10 plus two parameter was priced at 80 rupees. And this was, you know, at least one third cheaper because, you know, Siemens made a killing of, uh, of these ACR strips. And there were many other competitors in the market. We didn't care about those. We just said, we want to put a product where India can benefit and many people can benefit. It created such a big impact that this is one product that propelled Biosense all the way from where it was to about two, three years back where it got taken over by Perkinel. And many things that we went, uh, you know, along with Biosense, we went to funding agencies. The glucometer is another example where we said we can, Tackle this problem, ICMR said, can you make strips for us for two rupees? We said, okay, we'll try. We cannot guarantee you. But remember when you do want to try such, such ideas, always make sure you don't have a patent infringement. Always make sure that your market is clear, your patents are clear. If you have a patent infringement, then you will never be able to take it to market. In this case, there was none because the chemistry is known chemistry. Nobody is going to have any problem problems with the chemistry, it's off patent. And you can always use a chemistry like this. All we had to do was take two of these dyes and do a ratio meter. And we were able to make the strips, we were able to make the reader, and we were able to validate the results. That's crucial because if you don't want somebody to point you know, fingers at you, you have to make sure that everything is validated. This was funded by ICMR. 
validated at different places finally passed by uh, you know by dcgi in those times or cdsco now but the fact is that it was an approved product which could go all the way from lab to market but biggest thing was it was cloud connected so you know the the device could be connected to your phone by bluetooth and all the data could actually be uploaded on a server so you could actually do uh, district analysis you could do town analysis or what not you know you could do what not you wanted with the data and help the government map out diabetes for this country so that was a big deal the only difference was that we were able to bring these strips cost down to 5 rupees and 5 rupees which is these bottles that you see 50 strip bottles for 250 rupees or i think we had a 10 strip bottle for 50 rupees but most importantly we were able to bring the the biggest competitors in this space the large multinationals to their knees because they had to reduce prices and that was our biggest victory that you know they were selling at 18 rupees to 30 rupees even today they sell many of them but then they had to bring it down they had to actually go back to the government and renegotiate their prices and government now purchase it at around 3 rupees or so 2 point something 3 rupees but that was just because you know there were such products now in the market it was released in a very big function in new delhi and the previous congress government uh, and you know the dg icmr were present in that meeting and you know a lot of people approached us to take over the technology we did not agree went on to do another product and that you know enthused us we said look if we can do one or two we can do multiple and we didn't stop there you know we could have stopped there and said that look that's enough you know we have done enough we have shown enough but no we wanted to do more and i urge each one of you to work on multiple products you know you will see the breadth that our lab has done and you will then understand that there is still hundreds of things that we cannot do if i can do all of these things then india will be self reliant of course i cannot i i hope that many others join myself and many others who are working in this field in this area to make india self reliant one day so we worked on this problem you know this was a, a a healthcare let me tell you the story so the the thing was we start, put this idea to a healthcare innovation technology world cup hit labs world cup this is always held every year by hit labs and this world cup had 160 countries participating now with that 160 countries participating we had very little chance we thought we had very little chance you know there were these big countries usa uk you know switzerland finland you know and all these countries were participating yet imagine we came third when we went to new york and presented our idea the panel was so impressed and we were you know of course we went through multiple eliminations we were the top 10 and uh, all of us were called to uh, new york went and presented there and finally won the third prize uh, this is 160 countries made a big impact and the idea stood strong we said let's take this idea to welcome trust and see if they want to fund us they called us to london we went there and presented the idea there were several industry personnel present there big big shots people you know big big people in this area so welcome trust has a very good way of of evaluating these proposals based on the proposal they will call experts and experts are the the biggest people in that area in the industry the biggest people in that area in academia and all these people will come to welcome trust headquarters and then they will help you so they will not grill you they will help you refine the problem and make sure that you get it to a certain point where it has usefulness so we didn't know that we thought that we would get eliminated there it was nothing of an elimination it was of you know it was a sort of a discussion making sure that what idea you were presenting to welcome trust for india actually made sense for the country and they actually funded a big amount they wanted for this to succeed they put a um, uh, you know a mentor for us professor nikhil tandon we actually proposed his name and he was already part of the panel and professor nikhil tandon actually mentored us all the way through and made sure that each one of the data points that we showed the milestones that we achieved actually made sense and they were all uh, per all nicely validated so a lot of the data that you see here we did at kem hospital we actually did sodium potassium chloride bicarbonate ph urea glucose all of that in house reagents made using in house reagents made using the reader that you see on the screen with a built in centrifuge 
and everything being done in the in the device at point of care. So imagine a, a ICU patient who comes inside the ICU, blood is taken off, and it's usually sent to an ABG analyzer. Uh, you know, in the hospital somewhere, it takes two three hours for the data to come back. By that time, they cannot even start a treatment. This one can give you immediate results. And most important are the parameters that we picked. Of course, you know now we've got inputs of putting a couple of other analytes in there, and that will create value to this product. But we were happy with the data. We showed that data, and you know we translated the we uh, you know transferred the technology to Biosense. Uh, around that time, we also got a DST project, and this was uh, for a biomedical technology division uh, scheme. And in that scheme, uh, we were funded to make our own urine analyzer for albumin and creatinine. So we called it Uritsa. And we actually went through the process of validating it, of making the electronics and hardware. We even presented this at the parliament house and people were, and of course, all the honorable MPs and people had a look at this and it also created a big impact in this country in the sense that there were many things that could be done with such devices. If you can make such devices for affordable healthcare. Bioengineering is a big field. You know, many of you know the field, many of you don't, but people who don't, there are many pillars of bioengineering. And I cannot work on all the pillars, but I have tried to work in many, many different areas. I have learned along with my students and I still keep learning because, you know, many ide ideas that my students pick up are new to me. The areas are new to me, but then I say, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's try. Let's see if we can have an industry partner in the beginning and take it all the way to commercial success. And we've got many of these things happening now. We picked up micro needles as a project area. Micro needles is a huge area because micro needles means that you can deliver vaccine, you can deliver drugs painlessly. Now there is no such technology. All technologies in India are imported. Many people are working in, in this country. IIC Bangalore has many other institutes has, but it would be useful to tie this technology with a, uh, you know, with a, I'll say a, a concept that has translational potential. So we, we work on microneedles, not just as basic material, not just as polymer microneedle base or silicon microneedle, but as an area. And this was the idea we proposed to Gates Foundation. And you know we were awarded a grant sometime back in 2012 or 13, I think. And this was a wearable device. So we said we wanted to make a wearable microneedle integrated wearable device, which could deliver drug at the touch of a metal. And we had to go through a lot of iterations, make the microneedle patch, as you see there, make the uh, microneedles uh, in a facility at IIT Bombay, at ISC Bangalore. We also went to ISC Bangalore to make the needles. The needles looked good. They were comparison uh, with, uh, they, they could be compared to hypodermic 34 gauge needles. And they were as strong as these other needles that you see. So they could be actually pushed into the skin. But most importantly, we had a concept for making a wearable device. And this was, you know, because we wanted to make a device to show that, look, if somebody cannot go to the hospital, the hospital has to come to him. And, you know, not many people can afford to have um, doctors, you know, nurses, or, you know, pay or people attending to them. So why not make a smart device that can do what you can achieve in the hospital? Of course, in a very small way where, you know, we picked up these, uh, uh, you know, CINV patients, so basically chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting patients, where they are given, uh, you know, something like MSET on Dacetron. And with this, they are always given an intra, you know, IV uh, dose because, you know, they cannot, they will, if you give them through the oral route, they will actually just throw it out. So this could be a good way of doing that. We said we'll pick up this problem and show that this could be done using a wearable device. We went through the entire process. And I had a PhD student who worked on this, finally submitted his thesis, you know, quite a while back now. He's working in um, uh, Professor Tejal Desai's lab in the US. But most importantly, this student showed that a concept that, you know, started out as a very small idea actually could lead somewhere. And we worked with micro needles. We worked with a full blown prototype. As you see here, we had micro pumps, we had tubings, we had the uh, electronics all integrated in that or small setup. And most importantly, we could actually deliver drug in the format that you see there. So we had, we could do, uh, you know, bolus, we could do 
programmed, whatever, you know, you tell us, we'll actually program it into the device and you can do it. So that is a technology worth looking at. Many people are now interested in that. Somewhere, uh, you know, around that time, again, I'll say uh, some three, four years back, uh, many of us uh, were sitting together and, you know, I was presenting at an ASI meeting. Uh, Professor Manju Sharma had, uh, you know, asked me to come and present our work. And I said, ma'am, we've been doing this. And she said, Rohit, she and Professor Padmanavan were sitting and she said that, look, we do, you know, everybody does this. Why not do something different? And I said, what, you know, and they gave us some ideas. And this is why I say mentors are extremely crucial because they point you in the right direction. So we've been always looking at, you know, diabetes. We've been always looking at, you know, CKDs. Never looked at, you know, cardiac, never looked at uh, full lipid profile panel. And this is something that India never, even today does not have. Can you imagine even today? This is the only device that, you know, we are working on, which probably, you know, of course it will, but we have a BIRAC funding now to get it to market. This is total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides at point of care. When we proposed this to BIRAC, Professor Padmanavan was sharing that. He said, this is a good idea. You know, if you have some preliminary data, let's show us some data and we'll give you an AIR, which is an academic innovation research grant. With that grant, we were able to show from an idea all the way to TRL 4 or 5. But that meant that we had to put all this in paper, on paper, and we had to, on paper in the sense that we had to make our sensing strips out of paper. We had to put it in, uh, in liquid assay format, design our readers for that. So you see all the designs now. We've made paper liquid assay readers. We've made paper-based assay readers. And we've actually started um, validating it. So we did validation with small number of samples. Now we've been given a larger grant with an industry partner, again, my student company, to do larger validation across three hospitals. And once we can do that, and we got terrific data in the first round, where we validated our results with KEM Hospital Analyzer, and we found that there is very good you know, correlation between our data and their data. But most importantly, this paved the way for this product to go one step further. Now, hopefully with this level of grant, we'll take it to TRL. So this is the version that we are working on right now. It has been uh, outsourced, manufactured, and now it is ready with us for doing testing. And most importantly, it can actually do all three of these, all four. So three of this plus one by formula, but all four of these parameters with very little blood. So we are also working on ICMR funded uh, troponin INT using lateral flow assays. People say lateral flow assays cannot be um, uh, you know, quantified, but that's not true. You can do that. There are many such readers now in the market and many of these readers can do quantification much better than we do. Of course, we are also working on a hardware reader, but this is one format that we thought would, would be better because if we use a mobile reader, and we use intensity of these two lines, the control line and test line, then hopefully you know, we'll be able to give you a band. And that should be good enough. If you can give a, a cutoff values, then that will tell you exactly whether there are more of these uh, uh, you know, markers in the blood indicating a, a cardiac event. So this is also going forward with a student company. Hopefully you know, we'll start our hospital studies very soon. We are also working on an A1C assay and reader with an industry partner, and hopefully this will also reach the market soon. A urine analyzer, again, with an industry partner. There are many such people who are working with us who have come to us with ideas, and we hope that you know, many of this become reality in a short period of time. There's an Indian Navy student working with me doing his PhD. He's come to the lab, has a lot of ideas. He's a biomedical innovator. And we have been working on several things with him. I cannot even put all these stuff that he works on, you know, in collaboration with many people, many industry in our lab. And he brings in that expertise of being a Navy uh, clinician and a biomedical engineer. So that's, that's something which is unique. And that will only happen if somebody has passion to do this. So we are working on this. Hopefully some of this will reach the market. But most importantly, look at the array of products. There are many things we are doing. We are not just working on point of care devices. We are working on uh, affordable, novel, biodegradable bone screws. We are looking at TB diagnostics. We are looking at inhalers, you know, or drug inhalers, uh, sort of uh, spray devices. We are uh, working on many such other materials, CRP, uh, 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 ferritin, you know, name them, vitamin D, 
T3, T4, TSH, you know, every marker that you can name, you know, we are working in that. Because, you know, we feel that there are many, many things that this country still needs. And I, I, I would like to again urge all of you to start thinking in that direction, if not so many, because, you know, we were fortunate to have an army of, uh, you know, interns, students who were always willing to go that extra mile, you know, to work on these translational products, but at least one product per lab in this country. And, you know, we will never need any import in this country uh, in medical products. And many things happening in our lab. You know, I cannot even go through all of it, but uh, if you look at the nanotechnology side, that was what we started off doing. And I did not leave that part because that was very close to my heart. You know, we published a, a excellent paper in uh, nano letters in 2013, I think, 2013, yeah. Uh, that paper showed how gold coated liposomes could be used to kill cancer cells, not just in vitro, but in in vivo models and multiple in vivo models and could be also cleared from the body so that you know they don't end up in your kidney, in the liver, in the spleen, in the brain, in the lungs. No, they will actually get cleared by renal route. And most importantly, the cells that they kill are not able to come back. So there is no uh, you know, recurrence of the tumor. So that made a big impact. You know, Many people were impressed with this technology. We actually patented it. We went ahead, we started finding people who could fund that technology. We found a partner, you know, Infosys Foundation funded the initial part of this project. And we are thankful to, you know, uh, Mrs. Sudha Murthy, uh, to Mr. Narayan Murthy for actually seeing this uh, project as value. And we went ahead and did a lot of work with that project. But then, you know, it got stalled because there is this gap, like I said, you know, if you have a in uh, inside the body product, it takes at least a million dollars to do phase one and two trials. And a million dollars is not easy to get in this country, not even, you know, by established researchers like us. You know, it's, it's, it's a different ball game. And I still say that I wish that, you know, we had a lot of emphasis on such uh, projects, such products, because, you know, that could really make a big impact in this country. So this is affordable cancer healthcare, but still is not seeing the light of day. And there are many other things that we are doing. So we have set up a company around all these technologies that you see on the screen. And many of this now have values because a lot of companies are interested in the other technologies. Of course, the cancer one, we are still searching for a partner. So the cancer one, you know, I just show a few slides here. I don't want to uh, go into too much detail, but it's a big technology because there is nothing in this country in that domain. It's photothermal therapy, there is a company floated in the US, Orolays, which does exactly the same thing, but they do it with silica nanoparticles, which is non-biodegradable. Ours is a biodegradable material. And the best part is that their material is failing in clinical trials in phase two. Our material, I'm definite it will pass phase you know, two, phase three, four, whatever. The fact is that I wish we had the money to take it forward. So there are many things, you know, we have shown materials. We now are waiting for uh, there's a donor at IIT Bombay, an alumni donor, Sri Raj Nair, who has committed money to set up a GMP facility. This will scale up the material to gram levels, and that will be useful now to take it to trial. So that was our first bottleneck that we have solved with the help of uh, the support from Sri Raj Nair. But hopefully, you know, the next level, we'll have to go back to the government and see if we can find some funding. Many things, you know, if you look at the technology, it's a terrific technology. It's done in collaboration with Actrec. Uh, with Abhijit Day's lab at, at Tata Memorial. And it has shown that, you know, that, you know, beautiful data. So just read the paper if you can uh, from Nano Letters. And we've done all our preclinical work. We've looked at toxicity, short term, long term toxicity. We've got all the data now to show beautiful results. And our lab works a lot in this area because there's a full fledged uh, work happening in all this uh, in vivo stuff. And we keep publishing papers, we keep patenting, and hopefully, you know, one day we'll be able to take one of this product to the market. But there are many other things. We work on bone screws, like I said, and these are not just bone screws, but they are soft tissue fixation devices. If you look at the screw at the bottom side of your screen, left corner, you'll see this is a Smith and Nephew screw, cost 15,000 rupees. How many of us will be able to afford four such screws in a surgery? Not many. And the fact is that even today, there are no Indian products in the market. So 
that is because look at the companies look at covid uh, uh, conmed striker covid and dupoi you know smith and nephew all these big companies zimmer you know i don't know which, which other companies all these big companies are there and they are all there because they want to push their products in the market and not and hope that no indian innovation moves forward we were fortunate that you know we could actually work on a product which was different from these people we patented the technology we got all the material uh, patented through icmr multiple patents filed not just us but japanese uh, uh, europe and we hope that this technology we set up a company around this technology and we hope that we'll be able to take this forward but the most important thing is that it has potential and it has affordability so instead of 15000 rupees our screws would cost 1000 Uh, you know i'm just giving a number i don't know what the company will put it at but the fact is that it won't cost that much to make so whatever money you make out of that screw will go back to you know doing more such r and d there are many other things we also work on orthopedic site implant associated infection with a orthopedic surgeon who visited our lab and he gave a lot of inputs he said even today india does not have this product septocol is the only product out there collagen sponges which have to be dipped in antibiotic and put on site we said it's a simple problem you know why why should we even worry about it? we can make our own sponges make our own drug loaded sponges different microparticles nanoparticles loaded inside you can control the release you can make them degradable you can make whatever profile you want and we worked on the technology with many over many years now we have uh, now we are moving ahead with another company partner to take this to market there's a lot of interest because this is a technology that has holds a lot of promise but on the other side we also work on social innovation so i say this i always bring this slide here because i say that we've done all that we could do for commercial innovation and we you know of course iit bombay uh, we you know the student companies you know everybody has got commercial output out of it but there is something that always nagged me and said that look if i am doing so much on the other side why not do something for a social cause is well. and i urge again i urge everybody who whenever i give a talk please do work for the you know underprivileged in this country we do a lot of work for child and maternal health and this is an area that is close to my heart we've got a center of excellence now at iit bombay uh, we are not able to start our work because of covid hopefully we'll be able to do that very soon but we have targeted malnutrition and malnutrition is an area which is which is big for this country many states have more than 50% and all we did was bring together our products nothing else we did not we did not start we did not ask money to research new products we said give us money to take these products and do pilots and show you data so that you can analyze whether that data will be useful for creating some new scheme for looking at you know whether the government schemes are working whether there is a need to introduce something else in that district so that is the only reason we wanted to do this and make sure that you know everybody is aware that something that happens in an engineering in an you know an institute like iit actually has social uh, impact as well and care mother is a huge platform you see that in the bottom left of your screen that's again from a student who's doing a phd in my lab uh, he's a care mother that's care mother platform he set up care nx and we've got a smart scale we've got smart height detection we've got uh, anemia screening and we can do all of that and put it on a server you know so we are struggling to do that a little bit because you know in order to access the nic server you know in ic you have to actually have some you know interface so that is where we are a little uh, we have put it on our server and we can actually let the government access our server but i wish we could do that with the government server but there are many things you know we are we have this all this kit you see that a bag which holds all these different tests and an anganwadi worker goes door to door and looks at high risk pregnancies she doesn't diagnose anything she just monitor she does measures and the the app actually uploads it to a server all the analysis is done on that server and the data is then sent to a, a, a you know a primary healthcare setup or a secondary healthcare or tertiary healthcare if there is reference needed but most importantly you see that that there is benefit of doing that because it's affordable one the government can afford to pay for such tests and the other it creates impact so we've done that at at uh, ahmednagar district we've done that in 
in Rajasthan, we've done that in urban slums in Mumbai, we've done that in northeast corners of this country through student companies. So I don't myself go there, but I urge each one of my students to actually pick up some of these social causes. One of my students has set up a foundation also, and they're also working very heavily towards uh, TB and AIDS and HIV, you know, so they, they proclaim in all these areas. So a lot of data we have, and the data goes back to the government. The government has all the right to look at the data to see whether it can create an impact. We have been able to reach many villages, save many mothers. You know, that's my biggest happiness that, you know, uh, several of these high-risk pregnancies were identified early on, and they were then referred, and they were saved. If we had not intervened, or we had not asked the the uh, the healthcare setup to intervene, then that one child would have been lost. So that is something that comforts me. Of course, we keep doing what we keep doing and we keep, keep getting grants. Uh, today, the situation is a little difficult because of what the country is going through, but I'm pretty sure it will improve. Uh, translational research is always well-funded in this country. There are many agencies, BIRAC, Imprint, um, all the different schemes that you see, DST, TDB, uh, ICMR, ICMR has several schemes, DBT has several schemes. All of these agencies are willing to fund research. As long as you have an idea, you have an industry partner with you and you have surveyed the market. Do not stop and think, just go and push your idea into these schemes. You will get the money and you will get the, the, the push to take that idea all the way from an ideation, which is TRL1, all the way to TRL9, which is commercialization. If you can do that, you you do you add a lot of value. So we do that. You know we don't stop uh, graduating PhD students. That's my primary job. Teaching is my primary job. Graduating PhD students, training PhD masters, PhD students in the department, making sure that I train interns in the lab. That's also a big thing that I do because I know that these people couldn't get into IIT. So let them come and get the flavor of an IIT lab. Let them come and get the benefit of working with an industry. And each one of them, I write recommendations. They're all well set in the US, many places in the country, in the US. And they all are happy that they got the opportunity to work in it. We support medtech innovators across the country. We file patents, like I said, more than 130 patents filed from just my lab. We commercialize a lot of products, done many. We have many more to go. Uh, we st have helped startup companies. I personally am now you know, maybe a co-founder in one or two. But the fact is that I have never stopped a student from setting up a company. And I've always stood behind him in every meeting that I've gone to without any conflict because, you know, I've never held any stake in these companies. And most importantly, we've created high value jobs. More importantly, we have benefited, patients have benefited from our technologies. That helps me, that keeps me working. And I hope it will keep all of us working uh, to make sure that, you know, our work, our technologies reach the market, help the patients. We do show our uh, data, our devices, our work to everybody. But we were very happy when the Honorable Prime Minister saw this. And he was very happy seeing what IIT Bombay has contributed to this country. Of course, the Honorable uh, HRD Minister, the Science and Technology Minister, we've shown that to several people. You know, many places we've demonstrated our technologies. Uh, we've we keep showcasing this at uh, at uh, you know tech fest in iit bombay uh, keep motivating school children i also uh, have given internships to class 11 and 12 students in the in the uh, in the department and i keep hoping that these people can come back and do a masters or a phd at iit bombay do a btech in iit bombay and again go on to do research and that would be my biggest happiness that you know we would be able to motivate some of these youngsters to come back to India or you know, stay back in India and keep doing research for India. Uh, we have a lot of partners. That was what my lab looked like at, at some time, you know, 50, 55 people in the lab. Several IITs, we have collaborations now because everywhere we have some or the other student working as a faculty. Um, hospitals, we've got a lot of collaboration with hospitals, with incubators, with small and large companies you see, with the Indian Navy now with all my startup companies, uh, student startup companies, I would say, and many new companies that have joined hands during COVID times. Let me end this lecture by thanking my biggest mentors, you know, Professor Padmanavan, who has been a pillar of support, 
to all the youngsters in this country, to people who have been doing translational research. He understands and helps all of us, you know, and guides us, you know, we do what we do. So Manju Sharma, again, a pillar, you know, nobody like her, you know, I cannot even thank her enough for what she has done to all the youngsters, for all the youngsters in this country and motivated them to do uh, good research. And Dr. Renu Sarup, of course, you know, nobody needs to say a second word about her. She has led the country during the most difficult time in DBT and BIRAC. And today what we see in India is because of these three personalities, you know, I, I say that with pride that all three of them are my mentors. So thank you very much. Thank to everybody. And I hope that I keep doing what I am doing. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shirvasta, for enlightening us the various uh, science promotion activities, right from the grassroots level, I'll say from the school to the BTEC to master's to PhD, and even doing this handholding to your PhD students to get to those startups and uh, getting to the product commercializations, patenting. So it's an all in all complete package. So I do hope that uh, some of the attendees who are attending this particular lecture would definitely be benefited and motivated to work actively wherever they are working because it's, it may not be possible for them to get all these kind of facilities which uh, you have in your lab. But whatever way we can contribute, that should be the spirit. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, there are other than a lot of uh, congratulatory messages in the chat I can see, but there are a few questions. Uh, would you like, uh, can you can you see the chat? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm seeing yeah. so you can you can take up any uh, selected questions or if all we have about seven to eight minutes with us. Okay, yeah. okay. let me see. So I can see can a faculty of IIT Bombay open a company or any IIT open a company? If yes, what are the modalities? Of course, you can, you know, today uh, all the IITs have incubators on campus and the incubators can uh, help support your company. Of course, you can incubate in the incubator if you want, you can do it outside. Nobody stops you. All you have to do is, is make sure that the technology transfer is done through the technology transfer office. If you have an idea, if you have uh, you know, a product that you are working on and that technology can be transferred to the company and there can be a licensing you know, agreement in place, anything is possible now. So no, no, no difficult modalities, everything is simplified. Please suggest funding provided by industries. So see funding, many, many industries, I'll give you examples. So many industries uh, uh, say, I would like to work on, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, the A1C, right? The HB A1C reader or the urine analy analysis uh, reader that I showed you. There was this company that came to me and said that, look, we would like you to work on this problem. And this is because, you know, after you've made a name for yourself, of course, if they can go to anybody they would like to. They chose, you know, some of us, you know, they say that, look, we would like to work with you. We'll give you this much money. Can you actually make this product and show a prototype or, you know, take it all the way to market? So many companies now fund prototypes. They want to partner with us. They want to go along as partner to funding agencies so that they can get money. So many companies now provide funding. Many research funding is being done by them. Somebody has said, how can you justify your product is smart. I mean, if something is smart, it must multifunction in nature. See, again, uh, no, uh, I did not give any example there. The smart, many, many smart things are there because, you know, it can also uh, sense and deliver. So if there is that sort of a modality there, then, you know, I would call it smart. And you are right. Maybe it is, at this point, it may not be smart, but then if you can include that modality of, being able to sense glucose and then delivering a certain amount of insulin that makes it smart. So we are working on a on you know some smart materials. I'm not want to disclose that, but there are many things that we are working on. You know we were working on a smart drug delivery patch. You know for arthritis arthritis patients that could you know of course the smartness was not because the thing could sense the pain, but if there was pain and one could then apply you know a heat pad a heat pad or a cold pad there could be, you know, release of drug from that material. So there are many such examples you can do. Um, I don't think there is anything. MicroRNAs be a good biomarker. Yeah, definitely microRNAs. In fact, you know, for cancer diagnostics, microRNAs are the way to go. Uh, we also have some people working 
uh, in IIT Bombay in different IITs with microRNAs and diagnostics. So yes, they are. And I would urge again, many of you to start thinking along this direction and we can actually do that. And somebody also said something about kidney uh, marker. Yes, we are also working on kidney diseases and we also have a pro company uh, which is bringing a product to market for a kidney disease, CKD. I think that's all. Yeah, I think you have taken a poll. Fine, so thank you very, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Shrivastav for enlightening all of us about the various initiatives and your contribution and which has led to, I'll say, one of the, uh, I'll say the, the initial Shanti Suru Bhatnagar Award is perhaps the first one, I can say. And you, I hope that you'll get many more in future because the contributions which you are making uh, towards this healthcare and at the ground level, they are really pathbreaking. So thank you very much. And on behalf of the organizers, I would like to thank all the attendees also who have been there with us. And all of you are invited to join another interesting session on January 14th. And I'll be sharing the details of that uh, via email. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.